In this video, we're going to look at how to find the vertex of a parabola. And specifically, we're going to start by looking at it if we know the x-intercepts. And then we're going to derive a way to find the vertex of a parabola given a function in standard form, a quadratic function in standard form. All right, so this video is assuming that you know how to find the x-intercepts either by factoring or using the quadratic formula. So let's start off with this guy here. Let's find the x-intercepts. Okay, so if we want to find the x-intercepts, that means we need to let y equal 0. Okay, so this guy is factorable. You could use the quadratic formula on this, but let's go ahead and factor it. Let me give you a second. You should maybe pause the video if you need time to think about how this factors. Let's see, we have to figure out what multiplies to be negative 16 and adds to be negative 6. And that would be a negative 8 and a positive 2. So now we have two numbers multiplying together to be 0. And the only way that could happen is if one of these numbers comes out to be 0. So either x minus 8 has to come out to be 0, or x plus 2 has to come out to be 0. And if we add 8 to both sides of this, we get x equals 8. If we subtract 2 from both sides of this, we get x equals negative 2. All right, so we know for this parabola right here that we have x-intercepts here at negative 2, 0, and here at 8, 0. Now my question is, where is the vertex? Where is the vertex of this parabola? And if you think about the characteristics of a parabola, how it has an axis of symmetry and how it's symmetrical on either side, you should know, you should be thinking that vertex has got to be somewhere on the line exactly halfway between negative 2 and positive 8. If we could figure out the exact halfway point between negative 2 and positive 8, that has to be the x value of the vertex. How do we do that? Well, there's a couple ways to do that. You can count if you have a graph. Right? This is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 steps. So halfway would be five steps, right? One, two, three, four, five. Somewhere on this line. That's going to be my axis of symmetry. One, two, three, four, five. All right, my vertex has to be somewhere on this axis of symmetry. My axis of symmetry is x equals three. So the value of the x value of my vertex has to be three. Now, what if I don't have a graph? What if the numbers are yucky, right? And I don't want to count. So the halfway point between any two numbers is the average, the average of those two numbers. And how do we find an average? We add the two numbers together and divide by 2. And that will give you the average. So negative 2 plus 8 is 6. Divided by 2 is 3. So if you can find the average of the x-intercepts, that's going to give you the x value of the vertex. That's kind of cool. All right. Well, now, how do I find the y value of the vertex? Let's take a look um, at our formula. I know that the x value of the vertex is 3, so all I have to do is figure out what is the output if I put 3 into this function. So I have f of x equals 3 squared minus 6 times 3 minus 16 which gives me 9 minus 18 minus 16 or negative 9 minus 16 which is negative 25. So there it is. I found my vertex. 3, negative 25. Well my scale here is not great. This only goes down to negative 5. So let's take a look at a graph of this parabola. Here's my vertex over 3 down 25. And I was able to find that pretty easily if I knew the x-intercepts. Okay, get the idea? Find the x-intercepts. Halfway between them is going to be the x value of your vertex. So now let's take this to a little more generic or theoretical way where we don't have the exact value of the function. Let's say I've got some generic parabola. So notice I don't have any numbers labeled here. And I just placed this parabola somewhere on the x-y axis. It doesn't matter where I would have put it. Okay, I'm just trying to get a picture 
of a parabola that intersects in two places. And this is a general equation of a parabola. So we know that these are our x-intercepts. Okay, let's call this value x1 for x-intercept number 1, and let's call this value x2. So this is like uh, x2, 0. It doesn't matter which one I labeled x1 and x2. Now let's think about where the vertex would be. Okay, where's the vertex? We know it's halfway between x1 and x2. It's going to be somewhere on this line. Remember, how would I find this value? How would I find this x value? How do we do it? You got it? We average, right? We want to find what's halfway between x1 and x2. So what we would do to find this x value is we would take x1 plus x2 and divide it by 2. That would give me this x value right here. That would be, actually let me not write that as a point because this isn't a point. That would give me the equation of my axis of symmetry. And I would know that my x value of my vertex would be that average, x1 plus x2 divided by 2. And then I'd have to go figure out the y value by just plugging that into the function. Okay, this is where it's going to get kind of exciting. Now, do you remember the quadratic formula? The quadratic formula says if you've got an equation 0 equals ax squared plus bx plus c, the x values are opposite of b plus or minus square root b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Now, what do those x values represent? And I'm saying values because there's a plus and a minus here, right? There's actually two x values. What do those x values represent? Those are your x-intercepts. Those are your x1 and your x2. And I don't know how to label it. doesn't matter which one's x1 and x2. It depends on the parabola. So this, let's say this x1 is the opposite of b plus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a, whatever number that is. And let's say this x2 is negative b minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Those are my two x-intercepts. Those are the literal values of my two x-intercepts. And those of you guys in my class, we've proven the quadratic formula. So we have proven that these are the two x-intercepts. All right, let's go over here and write this down. So let's say I have this x-intercept right here at opposite of b plus square root b squared minus 4ac over 2a. I want you to start thinking about what the average is going to be. That's the x value. That's the x value there, which is negative b minus. How would we find the average of these two x values? How would we find the average? We're going to add them together and then divide by 2. So that's literally what we're going to do. It's going to be very exciting. We're going to add these two crazy things together, and then we're going to divide it by 2. All right, let's do it. So remember, this was like our x1, and this was our x2. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to do x1 plus x2. So we have negative b plus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a plus negative b minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Well, we already have a common denominator, right? So that's nice. And then we add these numerators together. Can you see what's going to happen when we add these numerators together? This square root and this square root are going to add to be 0. Well, that's kind of cool. So I'm just going to have negative b plus negative b, which is negative 2b. And then the denominator stays the same when we add fractions. So that's x1 plus x2. To find the average, we're going to take this value and we're going to divide it by 2. We're going to divide that by 2. So I need to divide this by 2. Well, remember, dividing by 2 is the same as multiplying by a half. So another way I could write, write this 
is times a half. I got a lot of twos in here. Let's simplify this. Let's see, we can reduce these twos here. When I'm multiplying, I multiply straight across. So I get negative b divided by 2a. And that's as simple as I can make it. Okay, what did we just do here, guys? What did we just do? This is pretty exciting. We found the halfway point between the two x-intercepts. We just found a formula. We just found a formula for the axis of symmetry. The axis of symmetry is negative b over 2a. And that b and a are the same b and a that you would get from your formula. So if you know the formula of your parabola, you can find the axis of symmetry by simply taking the opposite of this b divided by 2 times that a, and you'll have that axis of symmetry. And you know what's more important than just having the axis of symmetry is you have literally found the x value of your vertex because that's where your axis of or your vertex lives. It lives on the axis of symmetry. How cool is that? That is the slickest, neatest little formula to find the x value of a vertex. And we just proved that it will always work right here. Well, let's go put it into action and see if it works. So let's go back to this problem that we started with. We just derived, and remember kids, don't drink and derive. I have to tell that joke at least once, once a quarter. The x value of the vertex is negative b over 2a. Then we're going to have to find the y value of the vertex. Let's write it out. Remember, to find the y value of the vertex, we're just going to take whatever this x value is, and we're going to plug that into the function. And whatever the output is will be the y value. OK, this is going to be exciting. So sometimes I like to notate this x sub v for x value of the vertex and y sub v for y value of the vertex. So what is my x value of the vertex? Well, it's negative b over 2a, or the opposite of b is maybe a better way to say that. So here's my b value, which is negative 6. And my a value, well, there's nothing written here. That means it's 1, right? There's nothing there, so it's a 1, 1 times x squared. So the x value of my vertex is the opposite of negative 6 divided by 2 times 1. So the opposite of negative 6 is positive 6 divided by 2 is 3. I just found the x value of my vertex is 3. Remember at the very beginning when we did this problem? Same problem. We found the two x-intercepts. We found halfway in between and we said it was 3. We just did that in basically two seconds with this little negative b over 2a formula. Pretty slick. And then, of course, to find the y value of the vertex, we just take f of 3, which we've already done earlier. We came up with, oops, I should have put a 3 there. f of 3 instead of f of x is negative 25. And we could find the vertex just that fast with that cool little formula. This is a formula you need to memorize, just like you have the quadratic formula memorized. And this is how you can find the vertex of a parabola that's in standard form. Standard form is f of x equals a x squared plus bx plus c. That's standard form of a parabola. We're going to learn another form called vertex form, but we'll talk about that later. All right, let's try a different problem and see if it works. I want you to pause the video and I want you to find the vertex of this parabola using that slick little formula that we just developed. The vertex is negative b over 2a for the x value and then plug negative b whatever you get over 2a into the function to find the y value. Start the video up once you find it. Alright, let's see how you did x value of the vertex opposite of b over 2a. b is 9, so the opposite of 9 is negative 9 over 2 times 3. Negative 9 over 6, well that's going to reduce down to negative 3 over 2 or negative 1.5 if you prefer. Alright, let's go find the y value of the vertex. 
that's going to be f of negative 1.5. So we just plug negative 1.5 into our function. Probably going to have to grab a calculator for this one to save a little time. We could probably do it by hand, but... Order of operations, we want to do the squared first. That's 2.25. Um, I'll just write this out and then we'll do the multiplication on the next step, even though I could have multiplied that. So what is that? 6.75 minus 13.5 minus 5. And that gives me negative 11.75. So my vertex should be at negative 1.5, negative 11.75. And we didn't even have to find the x-intercepts to do it because we derived this formula using the general form for the x-intercepts. So we don't even have to find the x-intercepts anymore to find the vertex. And you know when you're graphing and we're going to do some application problems where finding the vertex is going to be very, very, very important. So here's that graph that we just did. We just found the vertex of this. We got it right, negative 1.5, negative 11.75. Interestingly, the x-intercepts of this parabola right here don't look particularly nice. And probably if we were to find the x-intercepts, I'm going to guess that we would end up with an irrational number. We would That doesn't factor, so we'd have to use the quadratic formula. And if we did b squared minus 4 times a times c, the part of the quadratic formula that's under the square root called the discriminant comes out to be 81 plus 60, which is 141, which I do not think has any perfect square factors. So the x-intercepts are irrational and you know we could have used these two x-intercepts to find where the vertex is but not a lot of fun certainly more difficult than that first problem we did with the factoring so how do you avoid all that this fancy cool slick formula remember this one write it on a note card recite it during the day alright thank you